It finally happened. Shohei Otani hit a home run. We're going to talk all about it. Let's get locked on, Dodgers. You are locked on, Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. And if you want to be in every day, all you have to do is listen or watch every day. And if you want to make that easier on yourself, you can subscribe and get notified when our episodes are ready. If this is your first time listening, watching, welcome. My name is Vince Samperio. Now we're in the right spots. That's your that's my co-host Jeff Snyder. Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have covered the team in a few ways for almost 10 years now. We've been doing this podcast for five years. We've been doing a podcast together for about nine years. So we've talked a lot of Dodgers together, and we're going to continue to do so and hopefully making us and you better Dodger fans in the process. And uh yeah, Jeff, I think there's very easy decision on what we were going to talk about first today because Shohei Otani. Has hit a home run. He hit it at Dodger Stadium. It was a true feat of what he can do, pulling an outside pitch that far into the right field pavilion. And, uh, yeah, it, it finally happened. Yeah, it sounded like a shotgun blast, like a lot of his home runs do. Like, it, the ball really does sound different off his bat. And uh, my son, I was watching the game with my 12-year-old, and he had just said, show he's about to hit it 435 feet, and it was 430. So, uh, so he... My son was the only one disappointed by that outcome that Shohei didn't have five more feet in him. But uh, yeah, it, it it was it was exciting to get it off off the the you know get it out of the way because Otani is one of those guys who even when he's struggling, you know he can do something at any moment. And to see him finally do it, you know, you could actually see him like heaving a sigh of relief as he rounded the bases. Uh, just happy for him, and hopefully. Uh, like Kirsten Watson asked about after the game, hopefully this will kind of flip a switch and uh, and kind of wake his, wake up his bat a little bit. Yeah, I mean, realistically, playing in some of the park different parks around the league, he would have had at least one or two home runs based on some of the balls he hit in Korea, but, you know, balls weren't really going out there. This one, no doubt about it, uh, was, was way out there. And, and yeah, it was, it was fun. You know, he got the sunflower seeds thrown on him, you know, the big ovation from the crowd, everything else. And, he, you know, he talked He talked about it after how he, he f- was able to kind of feel that way after hitting the home run, feel that relief. And, and you know, it, it happened. And, and he said that that he was happy about it and, and everything else. And that I think Dave Roberts had talked to him and, you know, kind of told him just relax, be yourself. Uh, it, it seemed like he had maybe been not even for a home run like pressing, I think just in general, like he's had a, 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 some hits. He's hit the ball very hard, but he hasn't really had any like gappers or line drives. It's been some that are pulled down the line, uh, you know, some line drives over the, over the infield. But this was a majestic blast that we had come to think Otani was going to hit. And uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully now this gets him going. He's free. Uh, they they go on the road now after this, so we'll see what happens if he can put on the show out there. Yeah, and, and really, this was kind of the Shohei Otani game because it wasn't just the home run. His second time up, he hit an infield single that was only a hit because he's so fast, and then he scored from first on a double that he only scored on because he's so fast. And, and, and you know, realistically. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez got a base hit right after that. So even in this case, even if Otani had stopped at third, he would have scored on, on the next hit anyway. Uh, but uh, like he created a run with his legs and then later he created a run with his bat. And, and realistically, since he can't pitch this year, like we kind of got to see most of what Shohei Otani is this season 
in this one game. He didn't steal a base, but uh, but he did, you know, use his his wheels to to create havoc and to create a run for the Dodgers. So all in all, like it kind of kind of showed this is a lot of the ways that Shohei Otani can affect the game. And when you win a, a game by one run, the guy who created two runs on his own is pretty important. Yeah, definitely. Now we we found out after the game the the fan that got the Otani ball what he got back or what what he exchanged with Otani for that. And I think it was a she. Oh, she. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just see the fan. Looked like a girl on TV, but I don't. Know. Uh, yeah. So it says I was able to talk to the fan and get the ball back. Obviously, it's a very special ball. A lot of feelings toward it. I'm very grateful it's back. It said that he traded a bat, two caps, and another baseball for it. No word from the reports of it being signed. I would imagine at least one of those things is signed. I would hope so. But, you know, this has got us thinking if we caught a significant home run, or I guess specifically this, Otani's first home run as a Dodger, what are we asking for? Yeah, and for me, like something like this, obviously it might be different if it was actually a – baseball history thing like you know a a baseball you could sell for millions of dollars you know if if it was otani's 74th homer of the year you know maybe it's different but this where it's really it's a sentimental thing for him honestly i would probably ask for ask him to take a picture with me and then tell him i'm gonna get an eight by ten of this printed up and i'll be back tomorrow will you autograph it for me And, and and that would be good enough for me um wow, realistically Snyder kids left in the cold you know i i, <laughs> I my kids would be with me so they'd be in the picture you know okay, well, and, and uh usually you, you don't you forget to mention them yeah you know because like i mean that's what uh in my son's bedroom he's got a picture of him with kenley jansen autographed by kenley hanging on the wall he's got a picture of him with dale murphy autographed by dale murphy you know that's like for me that that stuff's awesome and on my wall here i've got a picture of me with uh let's see if i can you see over there the bottom right picture that's me joe and oral autographed by both joe and oral and uh and over there you can see my cardboard cutout from 2020 anyway uh yeah that that's that stuff's fun for me and uh pretty much that's all i would really ask for is something like that and, and maybe you know I, I i do assume that otani would probably say well let me autograph a ball for you too and i i wouldn't refuse that but I don't think in a situation like this that I would ask for very much. Yeah, I would say that obviously it's sentimental to Otani, but I don't, you know, I don't know if the Japanese market for this ball would have, you know, some monetary value. But yeah, I think I've always been one if it's first home run or, or something that's not going to the Hall of Fame, maybe going specifically to the player. Yeah, definitely get it back. I remember, I forget who it was. I don't remember if it was a Dodger or not, but. When the kid basically brought all his friends down to take photos with whoever, you know, hit the home run. That If I was with friends, obviously I'd bring whoever I could with me. But, yeah, I definitely think a bat would be cool um, or a, a ball. Like, just – I'm not big into signatures, but obviously at that moment you have a little bit of a leverage play. I would try to turn it into tickets somehow, uh, like home run seat tickets at this point because those are so expensive for Otani games. But realistically, I'd just be like, I don't, you know, getting five minutes un, un, uninterrupted with Shohei Otani and Will the Thrill would be good enough, too. Yeah. And for me, that's why a picture it's like and, and I mean, I would hope that the autograph would be personalized. Uh, Jeff, thanks for the ball, Shohei Otani, you know, something that like, you know, because for me, it's like I, I know that a lot of players are suspicious of grown men asking for autographs. Um, for good reason, because most grown men asking for autographs want to sell them. And so I would, I would love something that was clearly personalized. So, it's, you know, so it's obvious. I, I don't want to sell this. I, I want this to hang on my wall so that I can tell my grandkids, here's me with Shohei Otani right after he had his first home run with the Dodgers. Yeah, there you go. All right. The rest of the Dodgers offense, they put up five runs for the ninth straight game to open the season. I think they broke a record since before they were even known as the Dodgers. So that's a good sign. But the other good sign is that it was against a left-handed starting pitcher. And the Dodgers have had issues with those in the past with, you know, this general, a little bit of change here and there, but, you know, the general core of similar players. And the Dodgers have seemingly gotten better against that kind of pitching for a couple of specific reasons. So we'll get into that. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. 
Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, rough racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. If you've ever been frustrated looking for tickets last minute, the Game Time app is here to help you out, especially with Dodger tickets being very, very, very not hard to get, but a uh, secondary market. That, that's probably where you're going to get most of the tickets these days, uh, especially for some high profile events like Shahil Tani Bobblehead and different giveaways throughout the season. So if you want to get last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals, and get the best prices for those tickets that you're looking for, get the Game Time app because they got killer last minute deals, all in prices. And look at the views from your seat on the app and they have their Game Time guarantee, which if you get 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same row or and section that are cheaper so go check out the game time app right now download it take the guesswork out of buying tickets from limited time all users can get 20 dollars off any mlb purchase of 150 dollars or more on the game time app with code first pitch terms apply that's code f-i-r-s-t-p-i-t-c-h for 20 dollars off from march 25th to april 14th only download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed We want to thank you for making us your first listen every day and make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube and becoming every day or by listening or watching every day. Remember the Lock On Podcast Network, your team every day has two 24-7 streaming channels that could uh, be beneficial to you if you're tired of watching uh, regular TV and you want some, you go to YouTube, you got Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles bringing you can't miss analysis, opinions and news streaming 24 seven on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. One is all about sports, Locked On Sports Today. One is about LA sports, Locked On Sports Los Angeles. All right, Jeff, uh, the Dodgers offense has obviously had a good start to the season, putting up at least five runs, which means they put up at least five runs in any game started by a left-handed pitcher. Uh, they faced three left-handed starters so far, and even though Steven Matz kept them under wraps uh, from for you know good part of that game, the Dodgers ended up winning that game, and the big home run came from a left-handed pitcher to Max Muncie. Now, in general, the Dodgers have been better against left-handed pitching, uh, whether it's starter or reliever, than even right-handed pitching. Obviously, sample sizes are a little bit different, but you know, the, with the addition of Teoscar Hernandez with M Miguel Rojas having a, a, some power so far early in this season, and then just everyone else kind of contributing. It looks like they will be able to at least be more competitive against left-handed pitching, which has been a little bit of an issue in the past. Yeah, and, and we, you know, coming into this game, I'm looking at baseball reference, and they don't update their stats till the end of the night. And so as we're recording this, we don't have Wednesday night's game stats. But coming into the game, the Dodgers against right-handed pitchers this year have an 848 OPS and against left-handers an 894. So actually a little bit better against left-handed pitchers. Uh, that probably went up a little bit because they scored four runs off uh, off of uh, – all five runs came off left-handed pitchers here. Four runs off the left-handed starter, uh, the home run by Otani off the, the reliever. And so both homers off lefties, all, all that stuff, It they really – you know. I, I wonder though sometimes uh, if some of those uh, struggle struggles against lefties are a little bit overblown. Um, I think we think we still have memories of 2018 in our heads when the Dodgers kind of went to uh, platoons for pretty much every left-handed hitter. Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy, all those guys were getting platooned for. Jock Peterson, obviously, uh, and I do think lately the last several years uh, it's been better. Like last year, I'm looking right now. Last year, the Dodgers had a 798 OPS against righties and 787 against lefties. And so, you know, almost exactly the same, uh, both well above league average. Uh, I, I I wonder sometimes if the struggles against lefties are a little bit of, uh, 
kind of the same thing about thinking they're terrible with bases loaded, even when they lead the league with bases loaded. You, just, you remember the failures, and so you remember 2018. You remember Madison Bumgarner having good games against them, all these things, and you forget. Uh, really, it's probably more remembering Ty Block. You know, like, how, how are we not hitting off this lefty who sucks? How are we not hitting off Eric Lauer and Ty Block? You know, and uh, but actually the last few years, I think they've been pretty OK. And uh, and so far this year, yeah, that is continuing. Yeah, I mean, that's I guess if we broke it down between starters and relievers, maybe there's a difference. And, you know, that that obviously is a bigger breakdown from it. But regardless, uh, if it is in our minds, it, it's something that we think about and something that uh, we're here to talk about. And like I said, with, with Freddie Freeman being, you know, basically just as good against lefties and he is righties. Max Muncy, you know, still can hit off left-handed pitching. Then you got, you know, Mookie, who actually, I think he was struggled against lefties a couple years ago, uh, but he's been better as of late. And, you know, Will Smith. But I think Teoscar Hernandez is obviously a big part of that too. Last year they had JD, but this year Teoscar, you know, he's hit a lot of those home runs against lefties so far. Like I said, Miguel Rojas, I don't know how many times he's going to keep hitting home runs, but uh, if they come against left-handed pitching when he does play, that's obviously beneficial. And it's one of those where it's still a small sample size, still very early. They haven't necessarily faced any top tier left handed pitchers. But again, if you're facing somebody top tier, it doesn't matter if they're right handed or left handed. You're probably not going to be or you, you might have a tougher time than uh, against guys like Thompson from the Cardinals. And, uh, you know, even though Harrison is supposed to be good. He's still very young, and and the Dodgers' offense is legit. Yeah, and we can break it down a little bit more in looking at specific hitters. Uh, and if you look at uh, the platoon splits this season so far, uh, right-handers against uh, right-handed pitching. Actually, right-handed right-handers are hitting better than lefties overall for the Dodgers this year, both against righties and lefties against righties. Right-handers have a 1052 OPS, and against lefties, right-handers have a 1203 OPS. A lot of that, obviously, is Mookie Betts um, plus Miguel Rojas. You know, like like we predicted before the season, Miguel Mookie Betts and Miguel Rojas are going to carry this offense. Uh, but if you look at lefties against lefties, Muncy has hit well, 919 OPS coming into Wednesday. Freeman 800 OPS coming into Wednesday. Uh, you know, hitting well, just no power, 333 batting average of 467 on base, but but no extra base hits. But then Otani coming in was, you know, a 445 OPS, Lux 286 OPS, and Outman 200 OPS against lefties. Uh, and, and so it really is the righties carrying that. If you look at the left handed pitchers against right hand and handed batters, almost everybody. It's like, you know, actually Rojas is, uh, I, Oh, his other homer was against a righty. So coming into Wednesday, Rojas only had a 400 OPS against left-handed pitching. Kike only 333. Taylor 650. But then Will Smith 1225. Mookie 1583. Barnes 2000 because he is one for one. And uh, Tay Oscar 2167 OPS against left-handed pitching. You know that that's probably going to drop a little bit. I suspect Tay Oscar. You know even Barnes might even out a little bit, might cool off a little bit against lefties. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they're, they're doing a good job of constructing their lineup. And, you know, I, I do think Outman's going to get more chances against lefties and his numbers will go up. Same for Lux. But, you know, most of that is going to be because Chris Taylor is struggling. Kike has had some big hits, but uh, not really against lefties so far. And so I, I do think they will give Outman and Lux more chances against lefties as the season goes on. And a lot of those numbers are leaving out, but overall, yeah, I mean, the Dodgers don't seem intimidated by whoever's pitching. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that their, their big four, five, six, uh, can hit either hand. Yeah. We'll, we'll see this weekend. They got Wicks and Imanaga uh, against the Cubs, two left-handed pitchers Saturday and Sunday Wicks, whatever, but Imanaga had a really good first start. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how the Dodgers handle uh, that. Imanaga but, had a great spring, too. So yeah. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see that because he, he's looked really good so far for the Cubs. Hopefully the weather uh, is good out there. I know it's been really cold. The White Sox, I think, got rained out, but the Cubs didn't. Uh, so hopefully that means that the north side is a little bit drier than the south side. I hope so. All right. Uh, Jeff predicted before the season that the Dodger, or bold prediction, was that the Dodgers would have at least 10 pitchers with the save. Dodgers are 40% of the way already on April 3rd, so it's, it's tracking well so far. 
But what are the Dodgers doing with the bullpen? We're going to look into that. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. I told you, I'm not going to lie. Prize Picks has got a little bit of a hold on me. And it's fun because all you have to do is pick more or less on stats and players. You know, Mookie Betts has been someone to, to, to ride with the last few, few or the, since the season started. Uh, you know, you can go total bases, you can go hits plus RBIs plus runs scored. You can even go singles, doubles, home runs. Uh, there's a, tons of different stats to check out, and you pick more or less. You got demons that give you higher power ups in terms of making more, making more if you win. And then you got the goblins that are lower and easier to hit, but don't have as much payout. But you can get up to 100 times your money on price picks as you take on the baseball season or basketball season or a lot of other sports that are on there. So go check out price picks. It's really simple to play. You make your picks, you submit your entry. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds. If you're quick, if, if you're trying to study and everything else, it might take a little bit more, but go download the price picks app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's the price picks app with the code locked on MLB in all lower cases. You get a first deposit match up to $100. That means if you put in $100, you get $100 extra to play and pick with. So price picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. We want to thank you for being an everydayer. If you're not an everydayer, you can become one by listening or watching every day. You can subscribe wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube and get notified when episodes are ready. And remember, you can go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider at joinsubtext.com slash locked on dodger you can get texted directly from either jeff or i about news reactions thoughts to things that happen you can text us directly and ask us questions if you have any as the games are going on or as something happens we had somebody new sign up recently and tell us that they left twitter recently and that uh, now they feel like twitter's back in their life at least for dodgers news because we update with the dodgers news basically as soon as it happens as long as one of one of us is by uh, by computer. So if you are not on Twitter or you feel like you miss out on Dodger news, you can go ahead and go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on Dodgers and uh, get it sent directly to your phone on a text message, which is very, very rare. So that's our friend Stephanie who said that she quit Twitter and uh, locked on Dodgers Insider has replaced Twitter for her. So, hey, if you want to quit Twitter and become an insider instead, uh, go for it. You know, I, I'm jealous that she got to quit Twitter and I don't. Yeah. All right. So last night, Denelson Lamette got the save for the Dodgers. He becomes the fourth Dodger with the save this season. Uh, you know, interesting. Well, the broadcast made it seem like an interesting choice uh, just because he's never really been a reliever. I think once he was in the bullpen, he's going to be able to put a kind of pitch whenever, especially when they need arms and had a bullpen game the day before where he didn't throw. Uh, but either way, he, he made it a nice and easy ninth inning when the run run game. And, uh, you know, might stick around a little bit longer. But in, in general, with the bullpen so far, I mean, we've talked about the bullpen game and, and how they've used guys in situations and maybe let them go a little bit longer than they would normally have or used, you know, in Korea, that, that second game, they used a lot of arms that they probably wouldn't have used if it was, you know, May or June and, and guys were more ramped up and able to go back to back. But, Jeff, I, I know there's – I saw some stuff about, you know, oh, Dave Roberts has been mishandling – this bullpen so far this season, but that takes away from the big picture of he is not playing to necessarily win every game in terms of putting guys in situations where uh, it could, you know, come back to bite them in terms of injuries or, or pitching too much too early. Yeah. There's also a little surprise because Robert said before the game that Daniel Hudson would likely be the closer tonight with Evan Phillips unavailable. And then Hudson pitched the eighth inning for, in my opinion, it was handled perfectly. If you get six innings from Glasnow and you know that the last three innings are going to Joe Kelly, Daniel Hudson, and Denelson Lamette, you look at the lineup and you give the hardest part of the lineup to Daniel Hudson. And that's exactly what the Dodgers did. Kelly came in in the seventh inning and he faced the seven, eight, nine hitters. And then Hudson came in, faced the top of the order, did give up the home run to Soler. Uh, so he ended up facing the one through four hitters. And then Lamette got to face five, six, seven to get the save. Like that's that's how you should do it when you're managing a bullpen, especially when your established closer is down for the day. So there's no, you know, stats or ego or anything to worry about. You've got three relievers to get nine outs. 
And well, there's nine batters in a lineup. Pick the three you want your best reliever to face and put him in that inning. It it just makes total sense. And and it worked perfectly. Like, yeah, Solaire did hit, hit that home run. Um, yeah, honestly, after Hudson went three and zero on Solaire, I was like, don't even throw him a fastball. Just, you know, if you walk him, big deal. But I know Conforto on deck just as easily could have hit a two-run homer after that. You never want to walk a guy when you have a two-run lead. You'd, you know, the, realistically, you would rather give up a home run than a walk there because a home run, it's one thing, and then you can you know, no base runners to worry about. You just keep going, uh, you know, all that, for, at least from a, you know, there, there's a lot of different arguments to make there, but for, yeah. from a momentum standpoint or whatever, you know, like you'll always hear people say, last thing you want to do with the two run lead is walk a guy, you know, challenge him. You, the worst thing you can do is put them down by one. And that's what happened there with Solaire. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was a big fan of the way the bullpen was handled this game. They did have Joe Kelly up warming in the sixth inning because, Glass now was struggling a little bit, and and he did get out of that. Uh, I'm not sure what they would have done if they had had to bring in Kelly to get that last out of the sixth. And I think Twitter might have exploded if Joe Kelly had come in in a close game with runners on base to get the last out because we've seen the Joe Kelly experience. But what we saw today was when Joe Kelly throws the ball in the strike zone, he's really tough to hit. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I know it's not as easy as, hey, dummy, throw strikes, uh, but – when the dummy throws strikes, things work out pretty well. Yeah, and Kelly's one where I feel like he lives off the adrenaline. So usually, it, this might not be right, but at least it feels like watching it that he creates his own messes. But when he comes into a mess, he might make it a little more messy. But he usually doesn't implode. So, but you know, it's happened before, obviously. But yeah, um, but yeah, I think the other note there in general, not just bullpen usage, but starter usage and. We talked about this. If the Dodgers went to a six-man rotation, guys would have to stretch themselves out a little bit more. And, and that's what we saw a little bit with Glasnow. You know, I think Roberts just, well, one, wanted to see him get out of it and, and you know, work through it and, and get through that sixth inning. But, you know, he did get to 100 pitches. And, and good thing he got out of the inning there because, like I said, it would have been a decision for him to make. But I do think with the extra day off, that's the benefit you do get uh, – you know, even though it looked like Glasnow had maybe run out of a little bit of, of gas, you know, Roberts pushed him through. And, and that's not something we've really seen from the start, like, you know, uh, too much, this especially this early in the season. But uh, I liked it. Yeah, he had the extra day off before the start. And with Thursday's off day, he'll have an extra day off before his next start. And so, and 100 pitches isn't a lot for a veteran. You know, it's, you know. Especially it, since it, a lot of those came in that sixth inning. He was cruising before that. Yeah, yeah. And and so it, I, I loved it. I loved that they let him finish it kind of like they did with James Paxton the other day, let him clean it up. And even what they did with Bobby Miller in his start. Like Bobby Miller got into trouble in the sixth inning and Dave Robert said, go ahead and get out of this trouble. And, and he did. And so I, I've been a big fan so far. Uh, and, and honestly, even, e even the games where you can question Dave Roberts' bullpen management, I think that he managed it the way he intended it to. Um, and that it, really the question is people disagreeing with the approach of, you know, it, it's March, it's early April. Uh, we, we're, we're in this for the long haul. And so, yeah, Joe Kelly made a mess. Sorry, Joe, you got to try to fit, clean this up yourself. Alex Vesia makes a mess. You got to try to clean this up yourself because, you know, you can't afford to just uh, throw relievers in any, at any point. They probably knew already that they were going to end up doing a bullpen game. And so, you know, he's managing with all this stuff in mind. Uh, I've been a big fan, uh, you know, well, at some point you have to just put it on the relievers when they don't perform instead of putting on the manager for putting those guys in the game. People never blame the players. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of putting bad performance on the people who performed poorly. Yeah. All right. Uh, a couple roster notes. Jason Hayward was put on the injured list. With back tightness, Taylor Trammell is now on the active roster. I would imagine we'll see him on Friday uh, against a right-handed pitcher, but it remains to be seen. And then on the Bruce Dark Rotterall front, we, we said the other day he was moved to the 60-day I.O. Dave Roberts expects him to be ready when that 60 days is up. Uh, he just he said Bruce Dark's been throwing, but just hasn't been able to let it rip yet. Uh, that shoulder's still a little tight or a little sore, whatever it is. But you know, uh, at least for Gratterall's sake, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. He's a, been a slow starter for them the last few years and then seems to, like, grow into himself as the season goes on. I don't know if this will count as, you know, when he comes back in, in 
May potentially that or late May, whatever it is, that he'll have to work his way back into it, or maybe he'll just already be in midseason form. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm excited to see Tramel in action. I watched a little bit of his batting practice today. I don't know if they do this all the time, but MLB Network was streaming the Dodgers batting practice live on Twitter today. And so I it happened to pop up on my feed. So I, I watched the video for about 20 minutes while I was I had a baseball game in the background and uh on TV, but I was watching Dodgers BP on my laptop. And uh yeah, it, it was Tramel. I mean, he looks like a baseball player, looks like a decent hitter, and so we'll see what the Dodgers can do with him. But I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited that we are 40% of the way to 10 Dodger pitchers having saves. Uh, I, I say Joe Kelly is the next I don't think any player. of our bowl predictions I've ever hit, so this, this might be the first one. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> positive about the the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back homers happening twice this year. You know, now that Shohei's on the board, like, that one's coming. But this 10 guys with a save, you know, I think Joe Kelly will be the next one to get us to number five sometime in the next week or two. Yeah, that'll work. All right, the Dodgers hit the road now. They go to Chicago. They go to Minnesota, and then they come back home for a nine-game homestand. So I get... have the Chicago weather up, by the way. Uh, Friday and Saturday look okay. Sunday looks iffy. Uh, it's supposed to rain. Uh, showers early becoming steady rain later in the day. I wouldn't be surprised if they bump up the start time a little bit if, if you know, to try to get that in. You know, we'll, we'll see what the radar looks like. But, uh, yeah, because that would be – at least the Dodgers only have to go to Minnesota after that game, and so it's not a, a cross-country flight or anything, but hopefully they can get through that. Yeah, uh, I think if Rob Manfred does anything on his way out these next three years, I think he's got to mandate anybody in the central to eastern part of the country, if they build a new stadium, has to have at least a retractable roof. Which won't help with Chicago, because Wrigley Field's never going anywhere, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, but... Uh, everyone else that yeah there's been a lot of rain outs already and movement and stuff like that yeah uh, hopefully it doesn't affect the dodgers but we'll see all right jeff you got anything else uh tomorrow it'll be just me vince will be off partying with his family uh it'll be just me and with no game it'll, we'll be doing a mailbag episode so uh vince is about to tell you our all our contact info so start getting those questions in and we'll you know we'll try to get to get good questions in for us okay well, there you go. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked on Dodgers. If you want to become an everyday, all I have to do is listen or watch every day, which can be made easier by subscribing and being notified when our episodes are ready. Remember, Locked on Sports Today and Locked on Sports Los Angeles are two 24-7 streaming channels on the Locked on Podcast Network, part of the Locked on Podcast Network on YouTube. Go check them out uh, on YouTube or the, the Amazon Fire TV channels app. If you want to go beyond the podcast and become a Lockdown Dodgers insider and get texts directly from us, all you have to do is go to jointsubtext.com slash Lockdown Dodgers, and you can get that privilege. You just got to pay a small fee a month, and you can get notified when there's breaking news, our thoughts, reactions to different things, and and more. Uh, you know, I know I promised some stuff. From when I get to go to Dodger games, it's uh, been a, a rough go of it so far in terms of being able to get into those Dodger games. But once I do, there will be stuff for you guys. Um, if you want to find us on social media, you can do so at Locked on Dodgers on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can uh, also find Jeff on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vincent's 91 and DM us for any questions or comments. You can also send those via email, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Text my device by podcast, Lockdown Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.